Good day, mate. And welcome to another Melcat Gin Review. And if you hadn't guessed already, we are reviewing an Australian gin tonight. Uh, and it is the Applewood Gin. Now, uh, doing a bit of searching on the website, you can't find a lot out about their distillation process, but I can tell you uh, they are based in Gumaracha, hopefully I've pronounced that um, correctly, in the Adelaide Hills, so just inland from Adelaide in South Australia. They are all about sustainability from what they're saying, so a lot of locally sourced botanicals, from uh, sustainably grown farms and uh, sources, even going on about their distillery being solar powered, so um, and uh, they buy carbon credits. So they're all about sustainability and making sure their carbon footprint is as minimal as possible. Possibly the one claim that, uh, on the website that I kind of raised an eyebrow at was uh, talking about the. Australian landscape producing the most complex and varied flora on the planet. <laughs> um, they maybe haven't been to the Amazon rainforest. Hmm. No, no, but I, I think what they mean is if you look at the size of the country and the different terrain, so you've got, you know, you've got ski fields to deserts. Yeah. So it can produce a lot of you know, you would have different types of soils and climates to produce different types of botanicals. Yeah. Especially if you're that size of landmass. I mean, isn't it like 10 New Zealands fit into Australia? Oh, something like that, yeah. yeah. Something crazy. So, yeah. Um, but I like that they they also, um, that, they're, that they have taken inspiration from the indigenous people. Yeah, absolutely. Which is quite um, an important thing yeah. in Australia. They've definitely got a real connection with the land and, and with the, the history of the country. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I did a little research myself and found that tw about 20 of their botanicals come from locally sourced Ooh. product, but it was hard to find one on their website where, what those were, but the ones that I found through foraging, um, was that there's two types of lime. One is a, a lime finger, which is an Australian lime, but not anything like traditional lime, and then a dessert lime. Um, juniper, coriander, angelica root, ginger root, lemon myrtle, bergamot, lavender, vanilla, cardamom, macadamia, lemon and orange peel, peppermint gum, wattle seed, and salt bush. Now I had to look up what salt bush was, mm -hmm. and salt bush is a type of a shrub that basically they use now, although that, um, the Aborigines used to use the fruit. Um, now what people tend to do these days is use the leaves and you can use the leaves in salads and you can dry them up but you need to speak more you can dry them up and um, powder powder them basically and use it in place of salt oh okay so there's a lot going on in there already I mean um, let's see let's pick some stuff out bergamot for example uh, anyone who's tea drinker might uh, be familiar with that in Earl Grey tea. Mm, um, so that's going to be quite distinctive. Um, yeah, the salt bush by itself is going to be interesting. Wattle it, seed is nutty. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what to expect from this. Yeah. Maybe something sort of quite earthy and spicy and nutty. Well, um, I, I have seen somebody say that it's not it's not a juniper forgin. Obviously, mm. with that many botanicals, but that it's mainly sort of the citrus and herbal and a bit of floral, okay. but not much on the spice or juniper scale. Oh, okay. Anyway, I think it's going to be interesting because it's going to be very different from most of our New Zealand gyms. Uh, so, I guess now's the time. Now is the hour. That's interesting. So they they say it's not a um, juniper forward gin but there's there's a good nice big pit of juniper in there okay i'm, I'm getting the the citrus and sort of floral notes if you give it a sip wow yeah there's the there's the floral um i'm getting the bergamot coming through i smell a lot of 
pigment to me. Yeah, so the pigment comes it's through. Eucalyptus. The pigment style. comes through in the taste. Yeah, it's almost. Do you know that uh, eucalyptus taste that gives you makes your tongue tingle? You almost get a little bit of that from it. It's really interesting. What I like about that, okay, so they're right, it's not juniper forward, but you're still getting the juniper coming through, which is, I have a complaint with a lot of um, gins <laughs> with too many or too much of a botanical in them. So, you know, it's complex, it's got a lot of different flavours in there, but you're still getting the juniper, and it is still distinctly a gin. It's really interesting. I like it. Mm. Right now, I um, shout out to my friend Gary Mills, who lives in Melbourne, because he actually recommended this gin mm. quite some time ago, and I um, have taken quite a while to find it in New Zealand. Yeah. For a while, you couldn't get it. It's a small bottle. It's 500 ml. It's 43% ABV. So being a 500 ml bottle, it's only 17 serves, and it's it retails for a around just under $90 in New Zealand, which is kind of steep. So it's, size, a, bit, it's but, a bit spendy. But um, it's quite, a, quite from that tasting, it's quite special. Yeah. Um, online, they recommend having it obviously just with tonic or a gimlet. Some people say just have it with water or soda. Mm. Um, they say have a martini that's a 10 to 1 martini, which is quite how we, we like it with a, Very with a wormwood forward vermouth. Okay. Do we have a wormwood forward vermouth? That sounds like a um, an investigation about to begin. Mm. But you know what you could do mm. is uh, you could make your martini and then oh, sp give the martini glass a spritz with absinthe first. Yes. Mm. One of those things we produced earlier in yeah. the bottle. Um, that could be an interesting. Um, twist. Mm. So let's put, see what it's like as a G and T. Oh, it's a lot more subtle now. It's sort of lost that um, eucalyptus bite. Yeah, it's still there. Slightly woody flavours coming through now, but that's really nice. And I see why they're saying not to put anything with it. What would you garnish that with? Oh, uh, I think they were sort of talking lemon or lime from memory. Yeah. Well, um, I think you could go a different way. I think you could go rosemary or rosemary, or even um, a slice of fennel root would be really interesting there, I think. That's good. I, I like it. I think that one, because it is a little bit spendy, I would save it for special occasions for those who appreciate a good gin. Experiment with the martini. I like that. 10 to 1 is very dry. That's bordering on a Winston Churchill. A Winston Churchill, yeah, yes. Was it wave? Open the bottle of vermouth and wave the glass in the direction of Italy or something. I think it, I think that's how it went. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. It's um, easy drinking. It is easy drinking. It's but it's complex. Still, with all that going on in there, this it's still distinctly a gin because there is the juniper uh, flavour going through, and I think. The, the natural pine qualities of the juniper, along with all their other botanicals, blend really well. It's leaving quite a tangy mm. flavour uh, as an aftertaste. I've got a silly grin on my face because I think this is my new favourite. Oh, really? Well, there you go. Mm. Could be. Yeah, so we're going to have to get through some of our New Zealand gems to beat the Aussies again. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. That's all right. We've got a few contenders in there. Yeah. Yeah, like it a lot. Um, highly recommend it. It does pay me a little bit to you know, give compliments to our cousins across the ditch <laughs> in the West Island, but you know, um, they've come up with a good one. Gin is a winner.